back to Miss Teacher Toot with Janice Leong. Today we're going to be looking at floating and sinking and buoyancy in a little bit of a different way. Today we're going to be experimenting and looking at how we can get things that naturally float on the surface of the water to sink. And things that like to sink, we're going to change them into floating objects. And that beautiful boat that I built, my lovely tinfoil boat, well, I'm going to get that thing to sink in three different ways. Let's see if you can predict how I'm going to sink my boat before I even sink it. There are a few different ways. And if you know anything about sinking floaters, you probably have a few ideas about what I'm going to do to my boat already. So that's what we're going to be examining today. See you soon. Now for this lesson, I'm going to actually take the beautiful boat that I built that's built with all buoyant materials and I'm going to try to sink it. And I'm going to do a few different things to try sink my boat. And I want you to think of other boats that have ended up under the ocean all sunk. There's reasons why these boats sink and we'll explore those as I sink my little ship. So this is the ship that I built in the last segment where we were building uh, floating watercrafts. Um, I am going to try a few different things to sink my ship and I want you to think about other ships like the Titanic for example which floated just fine and then of course it hit an iceberg and it developed a hole in the hull and which is the bottom part of the ship and that of course sunk the boat. With my boat I'm going to try three other techniques to sink it. I'd like you to watch it and record your observations as we go along. Welcome back. Well today we're going to take my beautiful boat and I'm going to sink it a few different ways. The first way I'm going to sink it is to give it an uneven load. So I've got these marbles, they're glass marbles, and I'm going to slowly add them to one side of my boat until it ticks and takes on water. So we're going to add my load just to the one side of the boat. Now this is part of the reason when we're looking at those tankers, the cargo ships, I should say. This is part of the reason why they evenly spread that load out. So here, if I'm just loading my load on one side of the boat, you can see my boat is starting to tip. Starting to tip over. Really won't take much more before it starts taking on water. The minute it takes on water, down it goes. So this is one of the ways a ship can get sunk. Here we're back with my beautiful boat again. Now another way a ship can go down, you can sink a floater, is to overload it. So I'm going to give my poor ship a massive load to take on. Here we go. Only this time I'm going to evenly load it. Oh, you can see it's already starting to sink down a bit more in the water. And down it goes. So overloading is the second way we can sink a floater. Now there's a third way to sink a floater, and that's to alter the sides. So the minute these sides of my ship become too shallow, too flat, all of a sudden, it's going to slowly start taking on water. It's a much slower process, but the minute it starts taking on water, it starts having a problem staying above the water. And eventually, like the Titanic, it'll go down. Yeah. So those are the three ways that we can sink a floater. Oh, and away it goes. One of the first things I think of when we're talking about sinkers that float is these huge cargo containers being loaded on cargo ships. 
None of these things should float. And look at how many of them are being put on these ships, out on the ocean and transported all over the world. Cargo ships are amazing. There's lots of different compartments built inside of them, and these big, massive cargo containers are loaded into the compartments and carefully stacked on top of one another and locked in place. Just think of how much engineering went into building this so that these massive boats do not sink. If you look at a cargo container from overhead, you will notice all of the compartments are lined up and all of these containers are neatly stacked on top of one another. You'll notice this one, they're not completely done loading yet, but when they're done, the load will be perfectly balanced from one side to another. You can see the little areas where they have to load containers in. That avoids the load shifting, shifting while the ship is traveling across the ocean or down rivers. These containers will end up all over the world. Some of them will be taken off of these cargo ships by massive cranes and loaded on trains and then shipped from there all over different countries so that people can get the goods that they need to make the world run. When you think about it, it's pretty amazing that we can make these massive sinkers actually float. Each one of these cargo containers weighs 24,000 kilograms or 26 tons each. That's a lot of cargo being moved around all over the world. See you next time. Another sinker that we've managed to get floating on water are these gigantic cruise ships. Look at how huge they are. They float with ease and go all over the world on all types of water. Just think about the amount of engineering it took to get these things to float on water. They are, in fact, like floating cities, moving along from place to place. Welcome back. We're going to be looking at how to make sinkers floaters. This rock is definitely a sinker. So I'm going to put it in the water and demonstrate that for you. Here we go. And down it goes. So here is the first thing I'm going to try. So I've cut a piece of styrofoam cup and I've used an elastic band to wrap it around my rock. Now what I'm doing is choosing something, a material like the styrofoam that has a high buoyancy force to increase the buoyancy force of the rock by attaching it together. So let's see how I do. I'm gonna put it in the water and we'll see if it floats or if it's still a sinker. Ah, and the rock floats. Now the next thing I'm going to try. If we remember from our very first experiments, we were testing the buoyancy of different materials. We discovered that this pencil was very buoyant because wood has a high buoyancy force. So I'm going to attach my rock to this wood and see if the wood will increase the buoyancy force enough for the rock to make it float. Here we go. Oh, not enough. I'm going to have to modify my design and maybe add two pencils. Here we go. I've modified my design a little bit. Now I'm going to try two pencils and see if that's enough to increase the buoyancy force enough to make this rock float. Here we go. Well, that's a little better, but it's still not as buoyant as I'd like it to be. Look at that. It is kind of standing up on its erasers. I'm going to have to modify my design again. This time I'm going to add three pencils. Here is my three pencil design. I have a feeling that this one might just work. Let me go ahead and put it in the water and see if I can get it to float. 
Oh, oh, and I've done it. It's just slightly below the surface and we've learned that that's half submerged. So the top portion is sticking out. I think that's good enough. I think if I put four on, I could get it totally to the top of the surface, but it certainly is floating a lot better than it was originally. So I have increased the buoyancy force of my rock by adding pencils. Here is my three pencil design. I have a feeling that this one might just work. Let me go ahead and put it in the water and see if I can get it to float. and I've done it. It's just slightly below the surface and we've learned that that's half submerged. So the top portion is sticking out. I think that's good enough. I think if I put four on, I could get it totally to the top of the surface, but it certainly is floating a lot better than it was originally. So I have increased the buoyancy force of my rock by adding pencils. Well, we certainly have learned a lot today about sinkers and floaters and how to change one into the other. So we've learned that if we add weight to a floater, or we change the shape of a floater into something tighter and smaller, all of a sudden we can change that and transform it into a sinker. On the other hand, if we have a sinker and we want to change that into a floater, we can change the shape so it's wider, we can make it lighter and it will rise to the top. So we can change how the buoyancy force acts on an object by changing its weight and size and shape. Very interesting when you think about it. We've learned an awful lot today. And tomorrow we're going to learn even more about other aspects of buoyancy. I'm going to sign off for now. Again, if you like these videos and they're useful to you, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.